Hey, hello, gang. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, as you know, we've been going through the book of First John. Not the book of John, but First John, looking at the topic of light, which is also life. Because according to John chapter 1, in him was light, and this light was the life of men, talking about Jesus. And so... Um, when we when we keep on going, we're going to finish up the, the book today, and it's going to uh, show that light reveals the following. And I'm going to going to take back up on verse chap uh, chapter <laughs> chapter five, verse thirteen. Okay, chapter five, First John chapter five and verse thirteen. And uh, this was the last verse that I shared last week. So this week I'm going to just read that last verse, and then we're going to go on to the end of the chapter today. So before we start, let's pray. Father, our hearts desire and prayer, like Paul's in Romans chapter 10, is that people would be saved. That's it. Lord, we can't take anything from this earth with us into eternal life, except others and somebody prayed for us and somebody cared about us enough to sacrifice their life the the possibility of being rejected to tell us about your son Jesus so help us Lord to to share Jesus with others because in him is life and it is the light of man so thank you Lord bless each one as they listen as they hear and as they do, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, verse 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. You know, and you may believe in the Son of God. So as you see, we can know that we have eternal life or everlasting life like John 3.16. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance and might have everlasting life. Okay, in the name of his son, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Um, you know, seems like today, if you're watching TV and anybody uses the name of Jesus, it's probably cursing they're using his name why because the devil knows there is power in that name okay others who follow other gods do not know that they have eternal life they don't know that they have eternal life. that's why they are they are striving they're trying to do keep up and and do things that you know uh pray mantras and and spin things and and I don't know, crawl on their hands and knees and, and do all kind of things. You know, it is because all of them, those others, have not attained or accomplished or worked or performed or suffered enough to have arrived at the place of enlightenment or eternal life. With us, God tells us right up front, you may know that you have eternal life. Why? Because it has nothing to do with our performance and everything to do with the accomplishment of Jesus Christ. You know, th that speaks right to the heart of man because we, you know, I want to be acknowledged. I want people to know what I did. Oh, look what I did. That's that doesn't get us to heaven. But humbling ourselves and asking God to forgive us and trusting in Jesus, then we have eternal life. Ephesians 2, 8 says this. It's Ephesians 2, 8 says this. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Verse 9 says, not of works or anything you can do or else you're going to boast. Yeah, I, 
Uh, you know, I got saved because I was good enough. Yeah, right. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. You know what? Jesus was good enough. So with that settled, that we know we have eternal life, let us move on in our relationship with God. Okay, so we're going to go on with verse 14. This is a verse that I would suggest that you memorize. In whatever version of the Bible that you like, memorize this verse. Verse 14. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. That is awesome. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. The Passion Translation says this. Let me move my notes down here a little. Since we have this confidence, what confidence? That we have eternal life. Okay? And it's in Jesus. It's not in our works. We can also have great boldness before him. For if we present any requests agreeable to his will, he will hear us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we also know that we have obtained the request we ask of him. So, what do we do with this information? Well, Jesus said to his disciples, ask, seek, and knock. For whoever asks, receives. And whoever seeks, finds. And whoever knocks, the door will be open to them. So what should we pray for? Verse 16, if anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask. He will ask who? He will ask and he, we will talk to the Father, and he, the Father, will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. So we should be praying for people who are lost, that they would be saved. And we, would, we should be praying for the people that are saved, that are still struggling with sin. And you know who that is? I know. Don't look around. <laughs> it's all of us. It's all of us who are struggling. Man, it's just like Galatians, uh, I think it's Galatians 6.1. It says, if you catch your brother in the fault, you know, you claim to be spiritual, if you claim to be spiritual, you know, help him in the spirit of meekness, lest you fall. Okay? So, you see anyone sinning? Pray for them. Don't go get on, the, on social media and say, hey, you know what I saw so-and-so do and all that. I had a lady come to me one time, and she said to me, did you hear about Pastor so-and-so? And I said to this lady, very nicely, I said, if it's negative, I'm not hearing it. And she was like, I know. She just wanted to tell me all the news about this pastor. I don't know about you, but I don't want people spreading stuff about me. I would rather they pray for me. So we pray for them. And God who hears, like it says in John 1 John 5.14, he will intervene and touch them. Don't you want that for them? How? How will he touch them? By making a way for them to escape it according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Another verse you should memorize. No temptation has overtake you, uh, overtaken you except what is common to man. In other words, temptations are common. Everybody gets tempted. Someone said, I don't get tempted. Then they go back to 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8. They are liars. That's basically what it says. And God is faithful who will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Man, I could preach on that, but, you know, and it's probably not the way you think I will, but. It says, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you may endure it. 
Okay? So when you're being tempted, look around. There's a way out. And, and like the Apostle Paul told Timothy, run! <laughs> run! Flee youthful lust or things that are trying to trap you. There is, it goes on and it says, there is sin leading to death. I do not say that you should pray about that, okay? All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not leading to death. Now, the only sin that leads to death is the one that's unconfessed. Get that? Unconfessed. So, you know, if you sin, get right, right away and confess your sin. Of course, I'm sure that, you know, when Jesus comes back or, or we pass away or whatever the circumstances day, and it's going to be like in the twinkling of an eye, according to First Peter, you know, um, that we may have said something, we may have done something that, that we're not proud of. And, and God will help us. And the only, the only sin that God rejects people is the unpardonable sin. And what is that? That is not humbling yourself and accepting Jesus. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, according to John 14, verse 6, verse 18. Now, we know that whoever is born of God does born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. In other words, you can the devil cannot, people say, oh, I'm running away from the devil. He cannot take you back. He cannot, he can, he can tempt you. He can do all of that, but he cannot come and say, you come over me to help. He has no authority over you. Okay, once you gave your life over to Jesus, he has to go through Jesus first. Amen. Verse 19, we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of of the wicked one. Man, we can see that today in the news. Don't let me go there. Let's go. Verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. What he wrote that we might know we have eternal life. What? It's in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If, every man be, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Or some people say are coming. God is in the process of helping us, changing us, making us more into the image of Jesus. You know that I came here uh, several years ago. To pastor this church you know that that pastor who came here he doesn't exist anymore why because he has changed like Romans chapter 8 says he has been transformed that's me I'm not the same person I used to say stuff <laughs> uh, I'm laughing because I think some of this was dumb stuff I said you know thinking I was all that but Ah, when every time I pray, help me, Jesus. He does. And you can pray the same thing. So as we wrap this book up, let us remember from chapter one, if we sin, we can confess our sin and God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Help us with the, the reason why we sin. Okay? From chapter two, love one another not worldly things. Chapter 3, prove you love God by keeping his commands. Chapter 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You need to memorize that. Chapter 4 and verse 4. That's 4-4. Four, four. It's pretty easy to remember that address. And then chapter 5, we love, this is the first part, and not this part that I've just shared with you, but we love because he first loved us. He first loved us. So, you know, what do we do? You know, 
all the time, the darkness is trying to come in. All the time, the darkness is trying to influence us, trying to tempt us. Trying to tempt us how? With our own lusts, with our own desires. You know the thing you should do? We should change our desires. We should continue in his word, and that proves we're his disciples. And then we will know the truth, and the truth will set us free. We will see that our temptations are just that. They are temporary temptations. They are temporary because you know, and I know, that once we gave in to sin, then we go, oh, that was so dumb. Why did I do that? You know, and then we think, oh, God's been watching me. And, wow, if anybody saw me do that or say that, or maybe people did hear you say it, man, we just, we feel so embarrassed. But even Jesus came to take away the shame of our sin. When we say, God, I've sinned, he's going to say, I know. I'm <laughs> just waiting for you to, to uh, confess that. So when we look at John, the book of John, darkness cannot put out the light. It cannot. Light always wins. So we need to walk in the light as he is in the light. Why? Because he is the light of the world. All right? So let's, let's pray. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you for each one that's watching. Thank you, Lord, for, for Living Waters Assembly of God here in Hilo and in Honomu, Lord, and on Facebook and, and on the Internet and on Instagram and all kind of things. Lord, thank you that we can be a voice for you. Not, we're, not, we're not the voice. We're just a voice for you to point people to you. Because what the world needs to understand is that you are good and your mercies endure forever. We don't understand everything about you. But the thing that we do know is that you care about us so much that you loved us first, like John says in 1 John 4, 19. We love because you first loved us. And that is awesome. And you still love us. You're still pursuing us. So if there's someone out there that's, that's doubting, that's doubting, man, God, God doesn't care about me. Let me... Lord, let me and my voice and others' voice be a persuading factor with your word to change their heart from the downward way to the upward way. Thank you, Lord. Bless them. And as we continue in your word through these online services, Lord, um, continue to bless those that are way far away, those that are new to this, Lord, your word is awesome. Continue to touch their heart and confirm in their heart that you don't want to leave them as orphans. You want to wrap your arms around them. You want to hold them close to your heart. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. So if you're out there and you haven't received Jesus, that's the first start. You know, first, uh, first start is receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. All right? So I'm going to end, but I want to say, love you, Mom. And all you guys, you know all of the ones that are faithful, like Mona and Ren and um, and Deshaun and who else? Jeannie and I, I know I'm going to get in trouble. I mentioned everybody's name is like, wow, what's, that, what's happening? And Sunil, far away. That's okay. You're close right there, Ba, when we're watching this. But some have said, you know, how do we support, how do we support uh, this ministry? How do you support Living Waters? How do you help us continue to do this? Is you can text now. We have a text number. You can text GIVE, G-I-V, well, capital or, or small, whatever, to one 808 that's the area code for Hawaii, 
1-808-300, that's 300-4496. So 1-808-300-4496. Or you can click Give at our website, lwhilo.com lwhilo.com and if you forget that just put livingwatershilo.com there you go thank you and check it out and at the first time you give you're going to have to put in some information but the next time that you give it's going to recognize you just put it in your mouth that's it I know a April and I have been trying to use this stuff this new stuff for us you know so aloha and thank you for being here today and I'm signing off right now. May God bless you and keep you, make, you, make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you the peace only he can give. In Jesus' name, amen.